It's Mike from Go Cell Phone Repair, and here's some stuff that's going on this week in technology. Apple will be releasing or has released iOS uh, 12.0.1 so that you can charge your new iPhone and not have to double check it and unplug it and plug it back in and turn the screen on and off. So that's useful, obviously. Uh, Samsung's foldable phone is being delayed again. Probably won't be seeing that for a long time, and when we do, you might get sticker shock when you see the price Verizon doing some damage control in the form of advertisements after throttling firefighters during a crisis in uh, California. Sad. And let's see, Windows 10 update causing user data to disappear. So they pulled that one because, well, all the files in your document folder apparently mysteriously were vanishing when you did the update. That's obviously not going to be a good thing. Apple denying that there is a spy chip installed on their servers. And this is something that's affecting not just Apple, but also Amazon, I want to say as well. Supposedly, allegedly, however you want to look at it. Google Plus going to be shut down for most users in the near future. We'll talk about all of that and more right after this. What's going on? It's Mike from Go Cell Phone Repair, and every week on Monday, at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we do a little wrap-up of what's been going on in technology over the last few days, especially things that happen on the weekend because, you know, we're all away from work or doing other things, and a lot of times these stories break Monday morning. So I wanted to start off with this because this is a big one. I think everyone who has an iPhone 10s 
XS, whatever you like to call it, probably going to be excited about this because now you can just plug your phone in and it will actually charge consistently. That's that's what they're saying at least. When you get this new patch and you know, we also talk about this quite often whenever there's an update in software and we're going to talk about a lot of problems that are happening because of this stuff this week. Uh, what what tends to happen in the beginning is we find out what's wrong with that software. You know, it's not like it's 100% bulletproof, it's released to the public and everybody's happy. Most of the time, we kind of sacrifice some functionality. Uh, in this case, it was being able to plug your phone in and have it charge con consistently. And sometimes it can be things a lot worse than that, uh, as I mentioned with this, the Microsoft update, but let me not get ahead of myself. So Apple, uh, if they haven't already done it today, they will be, and probably by the time that you watch this video, unless you're watching it live, uh, releasing 12.0.1 because obviously when 12 came out that was a big change so there's going to be some unexpected side effects there. One of them being that some iPhone XS devices did not immediately charge when connected to a lightning cable. This is a bad thing, you know, it's kind of, we take this for granted. You plug in the phone and it's charging. I suppose if you had a questionable charger or lightning connector, you might kind of double check that once in a while. And in often cases, what we see is when people have a cord that's kind of failing, which I happened to run into just the other day, you know, you take that cord and you start wiggling it around in order to get it to work. And that what that does typically is more damage to the cord itself, or it does damage to the part of the phone where you're plugging it in, which is kind of the worst case scenario, because then you have to go and get that fixed instead of just replacing the charging cable. Uh, but you know, it, I suppose it's intuitive to try to find a solution that's temporary but you know so often we get customers that come in with the cord like literally wrapped around the entire phone like this because that's the only way they can get it to charge obviously that's going to cause some long-term problems over time uh, this is also supposed to resolve an issue that would cause the iphone excess devices to join a wi-fi network at 2.4 gigahertz instead of 5 gigahertz and I'm sort of wondering if this isn't something that's been going on for a long time because I've been noticing this a lot ever since I started using iPhones within the last year and a half or so. When I'm in my house, if I'm more than 20 or 30 feet away from my router, it does switch over to the 2.4, which is obviously the slower connection speed. But even when I get back into proximity where I'm supposed to be getting a strong signal from that um, 5 gigahertz connection, it doesn't reconnect, which is frustrating, you know, because obviously if you've got good connectivity, then you want to have the higher speed whenever possible. And that doesn't always seem to be the case. So I, I always kind of assumed that that was the router itself that was a problem. Maybe it's something inherently built into iPhones. I don't know. But uh, once we know that this 12.0.1 is working and is solid, then I think I might switch over and see if that fixes the problem. Hopefully, uh, this is also supposed to restore the original position of the period question mark one two three key on the iPad keyboard. I don't use an iPad often enough to really address that one, but apparently it was in the wrong spot somehow. It will allegedly <laughs> fix an issue where subtitles may not appear in some video apps. That's obviously gonna be useful and addresses an issue where Bluetooth would become available. So a whole lot of problems are apparently with 12.0 when it was released. Uh, these, you know, the one at the top of the list obviously is the charging issue. If you have to keep plugging your phone in over and over to get it to charge, that is going to be a real issue, especially if you don't go back there and check it. You wake up in the morning and you have a dead battery, which we've all run into before, and that's never any fun. So I think, you know, as far as I've read, that's going to be, those are going to be the main things that are addressed, these five points. Good to hear that Apple is stepping up and getting this uh, fixed. And, you know, coming out and, and acknowledging there is a problem, we're fixing it, here's the patch. So that's always good. And of course, I'm sure that they were hoping this was not a hardware issue because if it is and you just sold a whole bunch of brand new phones, you know, the latest model, you end up with hardware issues. Um, historically, it seems that a lot of manufacturers don't want to come right out and say, hey, there's a problem. We need to do a recall until the warranty period is over, which is pretty dirty if you ask me. But uh, that didn't happen this time. So good news for them. What's going on, Greg M.? Oh, RIP Google Plus. I stopped using the, the oh man, I'm going to get to that. The whole Google Plus thing, I think we all probably feel the same about it. And it surprises me that they tried so hard to make it catch on. You know, you Google does so many things so well. And it seems like a lot of these companies experience success in one area. And then they decide, well, this is popular. We should do that too. And then oftentimes they feel miserably. So the whole Google Plus thing really blew my mind, especially when you were requiring people 
to create a Google Plus account in order to use something like YouTube. I mean, and that just doesn't make a lot of sense. What's going on, Nate? I uh, hope everything worked out for you with that software. Um, let's see, let's go over here real quick. Remember where I am, press a couple buttons. There we go, and magically we have, hey, Oscar, how are you? Good to see you. Uh, I think you asked me a question last week, and in fact, I do remember I went and looked for iPod 2 schematics, and I could not find anything. So we could probably take a look at something like an iPod Touch fourth generation, figure out where the touch functionality connects on the motherboard and kind of you know draw some probable conclusions that way to track that down. But unfortunately, it's I guess it's just a device that's so old, it's been out for so long, not too many people working on it right now. Those, those schematics never got leaked that I'm aware of. And usually when they are available, you can find them just by a Google search. So um, unfortunately, not a lot of luck with um, tracking something down as far as that goes. The only thing I can think of is if you've tried multiple screens and there's a good possibility there's something on the motherboard. Uh, I will be in the store tomorrow. If you want to swing by, man, we can uh, check it out under the microscope. Definitely looking at the board, a lot of times you can get an indication of the problem if you're lucky. So uh, beyond that, um, Nate, no luck with the software. If you're working on an iPhone 4S, uh, no, you said you had an iPad 1. It should be working. And if it's not, I'll, I'll give you some help, man. It's kind of a headache, but you have to just run everything perfectly. Otherwise, you won't get the results that you're after. And uh, I was talking to Nate about a password recovery prob um, program that we used to use. And this would work on a very limited number of iDevices. If you go and look at my channel, it's called Gef Gecko Toolkit. And you can recover four-digit numeric passwords from the first generation iPad the iPod Touch fourth generation and the iPhone 3GS and iPhone 4 and that was it. So if you had a four digit password, you could recover it, but all of your parameters have to be perfect. And that goes all the way to having the correct version of Microsoft.NET framework installed, having the right version of Java, the right version of iTunes. Uh, it works best on Windows 7 32 bit. So yeah, when all these things come together, usually we can get it to work. If you don't have a Windows 7 32-bit machine, my understanding is that you can use 64 and you can use uh, later versions of Windows, but you've got to understand command line prompts and be able to point the program into the right direction. So there are some notes, I think, on the video about that if you run into trouble. I'll try to give you a hand, but uh, I have a setup on, my, on one of my computers that works and I've just left everything as is because that way I don't have to mess with it anymore. So uh, next up here, Samsung has suddenly confirmed, it says, the Galaxy's nasty surprise, the, the new Galaxy's nasty surprise. Okay, I don't know about the titles that they use. I mean, I know that everyone is sort of leaning towards clickbait nowadays because that's how you get people to read your information. I understand that, but this, this is a little off here. Galaxy's nasty surprise. I don't know if I would go that far, but the long story short here is that app, uh, Samsung has been kind of talking about this foldable phone for quite a while. And in fact, I want to say we saw um, uh, some sort of video where they were showing something like this. But every time something new comes out, it's, well, there's a delay. It's not going to be available for a little longer. And this is according to a popular UK tech site called T3. And they are saying that the date for release has been pushed back once again. Uh, back in 2017, Samsung promised the phone would launch in early 18. That was then bumped to late 2018. And now... 2019 appears to be the target that of course could be pushed off even further and you know I don't know how many people are really excited about this this may be a big deal for Samsung it may or may not for you as a user I can tell you right now the fact that we are expecting to see a price point of about two thousand dollars for a phone like this sounds to me like there's not going to be a lot of people standing in line to buy this first of all secondly how excited are you about a phone that folds in half I guess maybe if you had one hands-on and you know you took something like this and you could just bend it in half and throw it in your pocket, that would be great for saving space. But it seems like, I don't know, it just seems like you're waiting for a lot of things to go wrong. And obviously if you're an early adopter and you buy into something like this and then you know a year down the line when it's out of warranty, it develops some sort of wear and tear issue or the screen breaks or who knows what else goes wrong. You got $2,000 into this device. So uh, if I were going to invest that kind of money, I would certainly want some sort of long-term protection, you know, beyond the manufacturer's warranty. I want to say that they calculated this thing could be open and closed something like 20,000 times before you started seeing a problem with the screen. And if that's the case, you think about how often people open their phones up 
to check the time, to check their alerts, to do, you know, take pictures, whatever it is. I think that could add up pretty quick. I'd buy a foldable Kindle, phone, not so much. Yeah, I'm with you, Harvey. If you had a, a tablet that I could see, and maybe this is what they're shooting for, you know, something with a much larger screen that you can fold in half. A phone, yeah, it doesn't seem like it would be um, that that big of a deal. I don't know. I, I really feel like a lot of these manufacturers are struggling to do something that no one else has done before just for that reason. You know, we're the first to do this, whether you like it or not. And do you remember when at some point it seemed like People who who designed and sold things were very focused on what it was that consumers were looking for. And now it seems like a lot of them are more focused on developing something and then convincing you that you need this particular feature. And if you looked at most of our phones, and I, I've made this argument for a long time and I, I have this conversation quite often. If you look at most people and what they do with their phones, whether they're using iOS or you know, Android or whatever it is they, they may have happen to have in their pocket, there are probably a thousand different things that your phone does that you will never use. And in many cases, people aren't even aware of their capabilities. So it, it baffles me that we continue to, to add more and more features that people don't use while not improving the things that people have been asking for, you know, indefinitely since the beginning of phones. You know, there are a number of things that we'd like to see that just aren't getting added in. And probably at the top of the list is a battery that lasts a long time and doesn't catch on fire or explode or swell up over time. We could certainly use some improvement in that area. Putting an old HP G6 laptop back together, former owner abused it, got video on screen briefly, so ordered hinges and a new single cable. Discover the analog, the analog it, on, I don't even know how to say that, analog IX chip is shot, supplies LVDS video. So does that mean you are got to scrap the whole thing? Hey, what's going on, John Cassidy? Good to see you. I hope you guys are enjoying your Columbus Day, if you celebrate that. Uh, this is another one that blows my mind. First of all, if you don't work at a bank or a government job, you probably are treating today just like any other day. Nothing special about it. Secondly, if you haven't already heard about the uh, scandal surrounding Christopher Columbus, it's kind of a wonder that we still have this as a national holiday. And at the same time, no matter what holiday it is, the first thing people ask is, do we get the day off? And if so, then I'm in favor. Of it. That's what it said. You know, that's the reaction I get. Should we do away with Columbus Day? Well, most people who get this as a paid holiday are going to say, no, nah, we need to keep this. Uh, no, regardless of how you feel about the way he treated the native uh, population of the U.S. when he, or the America when he came here. HDMI and SVGA still work. Okay, gotcha. So still work, still usable. Just no LVDS video. Okie dokie. Um, I am going to try to get through this fast today, guys, because I've got a stack of stuff on my desk that I need to get through. So if it doesn't end up being an hour, that's because I need to get back to work. It's not a holiday for me, unfortunately. But I thought this was worth talking about. Verizon is, uh, it looks like trying to save face, you know, after this big thing with the firefighters recently. If you didn't hear, we had, we've had a lot of fires lately here in California, Northern California. And what happened is that they had an unlimited plan, apparently, according to the article. These firefighters had an unlimited plan so they could use all the data that they needed to, which they need to when they're fighting fires and they're trying to communicate and, you know, I'm sure dispatch, um, people and equipment to different areas and track where the fire is and so forth. You get the idea, right? It's a fire. You kind of do what you have to. And they apparently hit the limit on their unlimited data and got throttled. And that caused some obvious problems. And the first question in my mind is who, whether you're a customer service rep, a, a janitor, you know, whatever your position is in the company, when there's a fire, I, I think that it would be difficult for anyone to be upset about you just kind of overriding company policy and saying, yeah, you know, they reached their limit, but I went ahead and let them have more data because there was a fire going on. Like people were, people's lives were in danger. You know, if there was a flood or a fire or any other natural disaster, would you not be willing to put your job on the line and say, you know what, I'm going to go against company policy this time because it's going to save some people's lives. Because if that company fired you, the negative PR they got from that, I think, would be far greater than this where, you know, they said, oh, well, you know, we messed up. This shouldn't have happened, whatever it is. So they're coming out, obviously, to kind of try to make up for the problem and is touting its commitment 
to firefighters and public safety in a new ad released weeks after Verizon throttled the Santa Clara County Fire Department while it was fighting California's largest ever wildfire. Uh, and I'm reading from ARS or Ars Technica here. From coast to coast and everywhere in, bete- in between, this is Verizon, people rely on us to ensure they can communicate when they need it most. Verizon said in an introduction to the new ad, our innovations and technology allow first responders to do their jobs. What we do, what we do saves lives. Okay. So um, apparently this video, which is on YouTube, is my understanding, has had... A reaction from the public that caused Verizon to disable comments and voting on the video, which, you know, not a big shocker because you can imagine what people are saying when Verizon starts bragging about saving lives after throttling firefighters' data during a wildfire. And it it strikes me as, as ironic that not only Verizon, but if you take a look at the Yelp channel, you know, the company that prides themselves on offering Uh, objective reviews of different types of businesses and uh, services and so forth on the internet. You go to their YouTube channel and last time I checked the comment section was also disabled on their videos. So that gives you kind of an idea of what people would be saying about them if they were given the opportunity. Uh, Obviously if you have a YouTube channel that's up to you. You can turn them off and on but I, I think that any company, any publisher really, any creator on YouTube that disables the comments on their channel says a lot about how people are reacting to whatever that video is that they published. And if they disabled the voting also, then while you can't see it, you can make certain assumptions as to what's happening. And the interesting thing is, I think if you hit the vote button, it still registers. It just doesn't display publicly. So it it certainly doesn't hurt, you know, if you're in favor of or against. If you can outweigh the positive votes with negative votes, I believe then it actually does hurt their organic ranking. I'm not 100% sure about that because Google doesn't tell us all those those, uh, details. Excuse me, YouTube. I keep using those terms interchangeably. They are not YouTube. Uh, So the chief network officer, Nikki Palmer, discusses the Verizon network, uh, discusses the Verizon network in the ad saying, we are constantly innovating from a dedicated lane on our network just for first responders to cell towers on wheels. We can even fly cells on drones so communications stay up. In times of crisis, their calls go through and they get their job done. Well, we certainly hope so. And, and you know, everyone deserves a second chance, I suppose. It's, it's despicable, really, how this thing turned out for them during the wildfire. But if they're willing to turn things around and say, hey, in the future, this is what we're going to do, I certainly hope that they stick to that. Uh, There was actually a mention in this controversy about net neutrality, which is interesting because what they were saying is that this pretty much violated net neutrality rules, which we don't have anymore, because it allows a corporation to put profit ahead of human lives, basically. Let me pull this up here because this is actually a related link here. And there's just a short quote, but I don't want to get it wrong here. Um, Where do we go? In repeal, no, that's not it. Where to go here? Everything to do with net neutrality. It shows that ISPs will act in their economic interests, even at the expense of public safety. And I think no truer words have ever been said. Not only that, but now that it's happening, we're allowing them to do it. What is to stop them, really? And that that is unfortunate, obviously. Uh, Hopefully, enough people will get sick of it and something will change. Thanksgiving Day in Canada. Really? I didn't even know that was a thing. Well, happy Thanksgiving Day to Canada. If you disable comments and voting, your video should be demonized. (laughs) Demonized or demonetized or both, Harvey? Uh, I wonder what brain surgeon decided to run that ad. Yeah, I don't know. I have a feeling it probably would have been in their best interest to wait a little bit longer so that hopefully, you know, from their perspective, a few people kind of forgot about that whole incident. It was this summer. It's like you're just kind of reminding everyone at this point of what you did. And if you think that the press isn't going to react, then obviously uh, you're pretty out of touch. So yeah, this one pretty this one I would say backfired on them for the time being. But yeah, if you're going to disable the comments and the votes, you might as well take the video down, really, because people are just going to talk about it. You know, people like me and everyone else is going to say, guys, it's pretty obvious 
that the reactions here were not what you were hoping for. And that was everyone to say that Verizon is now the good guy because, well, they got caught doing something that was pretty terrible. So I don't know. Uh, let's see. Let's move on here. And we have Microsoft pulling a Windows 10 October update version 1809. So this is pretty sad. And again, as I mentioned earlier, this is one of the main reasons why I do not update anything as soon as an update is available. Uh, also, for those of you who, who asked, I actually read something about this just this morning. There was a problem with some phones not being able to activate after updating to iOS 12. And I don't know if it's still an option, but I was told that if you roll it back to the previous software version, you would be able to get past that screen. So there was like an activation screen with the triangle in the middle of it, and it would not let people go through the entire setup process on their iPhones. And that seems to be associated with iOS 12. So again, if it's still being signed and you can roll your phone back to a prior, a previous software version, you might be able to get it working again. Um, so like I said, why I'm not on the cutting edge of software because I want my stuff to work. I want it for people to try it out, make sure there aren't any holes in it, that people aren't hacking it, that your, your passwords aren't being recorded and leaked out to who knows where, that your battery can still charge it. All this stuff is working. Everybody's happy with it. Happy with it then I upgrade or maybe just buy a spare phone to experiment with and see what happens when you upgrade that one. But when you when you jump on this stuff the day that it's released, sometimes this happens. And this one is really unfortunate because a lot of people, and I'll say I'm guilty of this sometimes myself, a lot of us don't back up important data as often as we should. We don't have it on three different locations, you know, maybe one on your computer, one on an external drive, one on something else that's in a remote location, whether it's a cloud server or you've got your own storage that you use, whatever it is. If it's very important to you, you should have multiple copies. Most customers don't, and no matter how many times you tell people to back up, back up, back up, it's not going to happen. So if you've got one copy, unfortunately, things like this happen. From Microsoft, we have paused the rollout of Windows 10 October 2018 update version 1809 for all users as we investigate isolated reports of users missing some files after updating. It goes on to say that the October 2018 update is no longer available for download and Microsoft urges users who manually downloaded a Windows 10 installation package to wait until new installation media is available. The biggest problem being, <laughs> of all places, the deletion of user files located in the C slash user slash username slash documents folder. So the stuff that you put on your computer that you typically save into the documents folder apparently disappearing after this update, which is bad for obvious reasons. Um, I have never tried this software before. I'm not associated with this company, but it also goes on to, to state that some users report that the Recuva software was able to recover some of their files. So hopefully you're not in this situation. If you are, obviously don't write any new files to your hard drive. Once you do that, there's a possibility that you're overwriting the old data and that makes it more difficult, if not impossible, to recover. And this kind of is a general rule that, that most, most technicians are going to know about, but a lot of consumers won't. If you think that you deleted something on accident, don't start adding new pictures, music, uh, files, anything to that storage device. Because if you do, once you start overriding data, it becomes more, more difficult to recover that stuff. So the best thing to do is stop, see if you can get some sort of recovery software that's proven and that will work, and maybe you can get your stuff back. I mean, I hope the best for you. It really is awful, not only to lose your data, but when you do it in, in the process of perform, performing an update, that's created by the people who published the software in the first place and then it messes up your stored files. That That's just really sad. Uh, so obviously this is not just Apple, this is Microsoft, this is, I'm sure every company out there makes these type of mistakes, but when we rush to update, I would say at the very least, make sure that you back up your data. And then that way if something goes wrong, maybe you can just restore the phone again and get that stuff back. But when you just, um, just jump in there and start, start updating, you're taking some risk. That's all I'm saying. I wonder what, oh, uh, yeah, demonized. Okay, Harvey, demonized it is. Hey, Saj, Saj, 007. Thing is, pro users can defer feature upgrades. However, home users cannot. Oh, interesting. Although in this case, the update was not being pushed out, but was installed if you seeked it, AKA check for updates. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. So that's even worse. It's not even, 
you deciding whether you want to update, it's automatically happening and then deleting your files. This sounds like a class action uh, potential, really. One person who is frequently quoted, uh, then again, when you agreed to those terms and conditions, you almost definitely said, hey, if something goes wrong, I can't sue the software uh, publisher. So uh, one person who is frequently quoted lost over 200 gigabytes of years of data, no backup, real smart. Yeah, that, that's the thing. I mean, uh, it's unfortunate and whoever made the software should be held accountable, especially if they're forcing you to update. But come on, if you got 200 gigs, if you have any amount of information that's important to you, man, please make a backup somewhere, somehow. This is this is really, really sad. Uh, imagine someone who's like working on a novel or something and they just lost all of their all of their files. I wonder if a system restore recover their files. Yeah, I don't know, Harvey. I would say who you know if this affects you, obviously be very careful with what you do and make sure you're not going to cause any further damage. But if I lost 200 gigabytes worth of data. Wow, I'd be in trouble. Although I think most of my stuff is just uh, raw video files from my YouTube tutorials for the most part. All my important stuff I have backed up in many, many different locations. All right, so uh, next up, in a letter to Congress, Apple sends strongest denial over spy chip story. If you haven't already heard about this, there's a company and they are called Super Micro Computer Inc. And take a look at this. As of... October 3rd, their stock value was 2140 and on October 4th, right after we found out about this supposed Chinese chip being installed in servers for Amazon and Apple, their stock dropped to $9.55 and it's funny because I had a conversation with a friend of mine about this and we said this is probably a good time to buy stock in that company if this ends up not being true and you can see it is slightly rebounded there at 1398 at this point in time but the big fear being that there is a Chinese secret Chinese chip that was built into store uh, servers that were purchased a long time ago and they are spying on everything that our American high-tech companies are doing the blockbuster story cited more than a dozen sources claiming that China installed ch tiny chips on motherboards built by supermicro which which companies across the US tech industry include okay it's all about how you read it mike let's try this again which companies across the tech industry including amazon and apple have used to power servers in their data centers apple's vice president of information security george stathakopoulos has made a strong denial and he says, quote, Apple has never found malicious chips, hardware manipulations, or vulnerabilities purposely planted in any server. We never alerted the FBI to any security concerns like those described in the article, nor has the FBI ever contacted us about such an investigation. Now, could this be someone uh, just stirring up rumors to hurt the value of this company? Uh, entirely possible. There is a conspiracy theory, uh, theory for you, Nate, that we could talk about. Uh, is it possible that Chinese manufacturers are in fact building in spy chips to goods that are being used here in the U.S.? Entirely possible as well. Uh, I, I suppose you could say if they're not doing anything wrong, they don't have anything to worry about, right? But um, beyond that, I think this is questionable. Definitely be something to be concerned about. And it looks like this is really the direction that we're going is uh, proprietary and other sorts of information that companies spend money to develop and then have to protect from foreign companies. And at the same time, we have companies like Apple who are trying to prevent us from getting access to the information or the equipment that we need in order to repair devices that stop working shortly after the warranty expires. So uh, this is a curious one because if you think about it, I don't know what these chips would be monitoring or what kind of information would be recorded and leaked and sent back to the Chinese government. And I don't think that this is a good thing. I think this is a, a threat that we should take seriously. We shouldn't have any foreign interests spying on our tech companies. That, that That's bad. But if they do, um, <laughs> I'm just saying if they do, I hope some of the information that gets out will benefit consumers and people who are trying to find solutions to the problems with all of these devices that we're working on. Again, not justifying it, I'm just saying. Um, maybe some of that stuff will, will get leaked. Funny thing, I'm still on Windows 7. That's funny because I also am running a Windows 7 machine. 
and it works great. I don't have any problems with it, and I really don't even connect to the internet with it, so I don't have any incentive to upgrade. And they kept giving me that nag screen, get Windows 10 for free, get Windows 10 for free. And I said, nah, that's okay. You know, I think if I decide I want to upgrade, I'll spend the $10 or $20 or whatever it is to get the license. Uh, which now I'm questioning whether or not that's a legitimate license. But it works. I'm running Windows 10. I got a key for it. It didn't cost as much as I thought, so I'm not sure that works. But I downloaded the Windows Pro, I, I download, download the operating system from the Microsoft website, so the key would have to be valid, right? I assume. Hope I'm right on that one. The uh, unfortunate thing, obviously, is that if this is not true, for this company to suddenly <laughs> lose this much value, like overnight, pretty sad. And again, you can see they really haven't come all the way back up here. Uh, this could have something to do with this lawsuit that uh, Qualcomm and and Apple are involved in, I don't know, but it, it makes you curious. There's There's gotta be a lot of things that we're not really fully aware of behind these trademark issues and certain companies refusing to do business with others and boycotts and you know the, the government saying, hey, we don't want Chinese vendors to be selling phones here in the US. Lots of interesting implications there. My only Windows machine is running Windows XP. Wow, that's going way back, Harvey. You can still do the free upgrade to Windows 10 from 8.1 or 7. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. Uh, but I do need to keep at least one copy of Windows 7. All right, so yeah, we're moving along quickly today, folks. Like I said, I might have to get back to work pretty quick. So uh, this will probably not be a full hour, but I thought this was interesting. Google is shutting down Google Plus following a massive data exposure. So it wasn't just, hey, we realized nobody really likes Google Plus. It was, oh, now we got some negative press. So, you know, all things considered, probably do we have anything to gain by keeping this thing alive? And I'm gonna say, not really. I, I, it just wasn't real, well received. Uh, people, for whatever reasons, didn't like the way that it worked. They were happy with Facebook and Twitter and other social media. And this looks like a, an area that Google probably Shouldn't have stepped into, but I guess you don't know until you try, right? Google Plus never received the broad adoption or engagement with users that it had hoped for, despite trying to force it down our throats, let's be honest. Uh, according to a blog post, 90% of Google Plus user sessions last for less than five seconds, and that is probably something to do with the process where they are required to log in in order to use some other related service. So that makes a lot of sense. I, I can't say that I've ever used Google Plus and they were probably just a little late to the game, you know, when it comes to social media, in my humble opinion. It's funny, though, because I had a guy, this is the funniest thing of all, I had a guy spamming my channel about phone parts that he was selling. So he was trying to promote his screens on my YouTube channel saying, hey, guys, go to this link and you can buy these screens on eBay. And of course, I, I try not to filter out too many comments, but if they're, you know, if they're just hateful, non-constructive, don't contribute information in any, any way, shape or form to the conversation, I usually uh, will delete them. And on this one, I said, you know, I actually contacted the guy, sent him an instant message or whatever you want to call it through uh, YouTube. I said, listen, man, if you want to promote your screens, just uh, you know, let me know. I'll be happy to check them out if they're good quality. I'll put a link in the video. People can go to eBay and and buy them. And it it really made me laugh. I got a nasty response from this guy. He said I something to the effect of I don't care what you say. I don't care about promoting with your with your thing. Your Google your Google Plus account only has like 200 followers. And I and I was like okay. Fair enough, I only have 200 followers on Google Plus. I don't know when Google Plus became any sort of metric as far as measuring success, but I had to write him back and say, listen man, here's my channel. And at the time I think I had like maybe 30,000 subscribers, something along those lines. So listen man, I, you know, I was willing to work with you, but based on the way that you're talking to me, I'm sure that none of my 30,000 subscribers would want to buy any of your products just based on your customer service and your attitude. And uh, I didn't hear back from him, but I did delete his comment. And it, it just made me laugh, you know, like Google Plus, who cares? Nobody cares about Google Plus, it's the funniest thing. Uh, however, Google Plus will continue as a product for enterprise users. So I guess if you're an enterprise user, you can continue to use Google Plus. The big problem here was that 
Uh, though Google allows developers to collect Google Plus profile information when granted access by users, a bug gave developers access to the profile data of friends of all those users as well, regardless of whether those friends had chosen to share that information publicly. So that is a pretty bad problem. You have an account with Google+, Plus. you're a developer. Now anyone that you're connected to somehow ends up volunteering all of their information through Google Plus without their knowledge. So yeah, that's not that's not a good one. I, I wanna say that there was there's a setting that you can disable that kind of in, allows people to do the same thing through Facebook if you haven't shut off those options. So it's definitely worth digging through and, and seeing what you're allowing people to have access to because you know you may be happy with sharing your information with the world, but if you have connections that aren't, there are sometimes settings in there that either you have to, you know, that person has to protect themselves against, or you can go in and say, hey, don't let people who see my information see the other information that's shared by people that I know, because eh, a lot of times that doesn't lead to good stuff. I've seen some very recent examples of that when it comes to political discussions, which we're all having a lot of fun with these days, right? Um, what do you do with friendly trolls? Hey, Harvey, if there is a friendly troll, you know, it's funny that you asked that. That's actually a good one. If there's a friendly troll, I, I generally may or may not engage them. But for the most part, I'll let their comments stay. And I'll tell you this. I have seen some highly entertaining trolls. And to me, that's some of the funnest things. One of the best parts about the internet is reading the comments, whether it's on YouTube or Reddit or a news story or anywhere else. Oftentimes, you find trolls who understand the entertainment value of submitting something that will make people laugh, you know? And for me, I'm I'm fine with that 100%. If you're friendly, and especially if you're entertaining, I'll probably even like your comment. Even if it doesn't, you know, it's not really contributing to a solution, but it's entertaining people, to me, that's adding value. If you wanna, if someone comes on and trolls just by being angry and putting derogatory comments on into a thread, how does that contribute to anything? It doesn't really help. But yeah, friendly trolls I'm cool with. Again, as long as they have some entertainment value. You know, if you're coming on here and being obscene and so forth, obviously a lot of people don't find that entertaining. So there's no problem with that. But yeah, some friendly trolls, I'll actually upvote them. I'll like the comment if, if they're funny. This is why I do not use Google, uh, use every Google everything Google shoves at me. They practice inf infanticide? Is that infanc infanticide? infanticide a lot killing off services that some people use yeah i've heard a lot of uh people complaining about that as well you get all set up on something with google and then they discontinue it that really sucks did an upgrade last month uh i'm gonna try to download windows 10 from a torrent okay but you're still going to need a license i think unless you get a cracked version if you do remember it might have some weird spyware or something else built into it i don't know um, okay, so we're 20 minutes early, friends. I'm gonna sign off. I am gonna cut this one short because I've got a lot of stuff sitting on my bench that I need to get to. I did discover something this morning, and that is my Windows machine will handle a webcam and a microscope cam. So yes, I can actually live stream some repairs and not have a bunch of lag. The only thing is I have to completely redesign my bench and my setup. So with any luck, my plan is next Monday, we'll try to do at least one live repair here during the stream. I also kind of want to change this format up a bit. We did get a lot of engagement and a lot of views on uh, Nate and I when we did our 9-11 conspiracy theory talk. So I think we'll continue to do that probably every other week or so, different topics. So if you have ideas, by all means, put them down there in the video description right after you hit the like button or dislike button or whichever it may be, or put a troll comment. You know, as long as it's funny, I'm good with that. Uh, okay, happy repairs, and may everyone be a success. Hel Johnny Chang, what are you coming in at the last moment, man? I'm just getting ready to end the stream. Uh, oh, then I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it. Okay, cool. Hey, it's uh, good to see you all. I hope you had a great weekend and have a prosperous week. I am gonna get out of here now and get back to work, but I will be back on Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and of course next Monday, whether it's a holiday or not, 2 p.m. Uh, until then, you guys have a great one, and I will talk to you later.